I'm Karen Sutherland from Edible Eden Design. I'm in my new greenhouse. What am I doing here with this giant cleaver? I'm using my new potting bench to cut up these really large, fully mature zucchinis, way bigger than we normally eat them because they're normally eaten immature. So to finish this seed saving task that I started over six months ago, I need to remove the seeds and clean the flesh off them ready to sow. So you might wonder why these are so big. And as I mentioned, these are zucchinis or summer squash. So they're meant to be eaten when the skins are nice and thin and the plants are young. And the fruits are actually eaten when they're about yay big. And these ones were carefully and meticulously hand pollinated. And then the flowers sealed off so the bees couldn't get into them to cross with the other two species of zucchini I had growing in my garden this year. And that was so that I could retain this particular heirloom variety. It's most likely a cucurbita pipo, which is the usual form of zucchini, what we call zucchini in Australia. And it's really important if you're growing any other species of that, or any other varieties of that species in your garden, that you don't allow them to cross if you want to save the seed. So why have I let these zucchinis get so big? As we know, we eat zucchinis when they're small. This variety is eaten about yay big. We have to allow all cucubit varieties, whether they're zucchini, squashes, pumpkins, to fully mature. So the seeds are fully mature and able to be harvested if we want to be able to grow them again next year. So when did these huge monsters start life? Well, about six months ago, I crept out before dawn and found an unopened zucchini flower. Unopened meant that no bee had transferred any pollen from another type of zucchini in my garden of which I was growing three altogether to interfere with this variety this special climbing zucchini that I really love so I took some male a male flower with some pollen and transferred the pollen to two female flowers and I could identify those flowers because they had a very small fruit growing at the base of them I then closed each flower with a little bit of masking tape and made sure to mark each small flower with its little tiny fruit and waited to see what would happen. In a few days the flower dropped off and the fruit stayed and I knew that these monsters had begun their lives. Then it was watching and waiting until they finally got to this stage. As the plant died off in the beginning of June, so getting to late autumn early winter, I cut them off with some stem attached and it's really important when you're harvesting any pumpkins to keep through winter or zucchinis like this to save the seed that you leave some stem otherwise infection can get into this point and your fruit can rot. They've then been labelled and left in a nice warmish spot on the front veranda. So in the last four months these have been sitting gradually cracks have appeared but I've inspected them regularly and there's been no rotting, no liquid coming out of them. The stems have stayed intact. They're in really good nick. And you can see the sort of weights they are. This one's 4.7 kilos. But this one we had to estimate because the little scale we had wasn't quite up to the task. So today we're about to chop these open and get some seeds out because it's definitely two cubits sowing time. So I'm going to chop this open. I'm going to put some of the flesh and seeds that I scrape out into, into this bowl and put some water in it. Usually I like to leave the flesh and the seeds overnight. Of course, you don't take all, this, all the flesh, just what's around the seeds. We're trying to get the flesh off the seeds. And then tomorrow I'll be scooping some of the seeds up and pushing them through the sieve or pushing the flesh through the sieve to clean the seeds. Are we ready? Not many times you get to use a big cleaver in your greenhouse. <sighs> Gee. And it's years since I've done this as well with this particular variety. So it's become quite a deep yellow. It's beautiful. There's no rot. It's absolutely perfect. This is wonderful because I really want to retain this variety. Now, another thing is that the seeds are nice and fat. Uh, not flat and if you pull out any seeds from a squash that you've bought or a pumpkin and you find that they're flat then they're not viable so there's an embryo in there there's a, the new life of the seed in there that's you know once a bit of washing has been done that's ready to go the rest of them 
because they're attached to some flesh. We pop in here. See, that one's nearly ready to go as well. We'll put them in there. We'll make sure they get, get some washing first. So all of these are going to be this lovely, special variety that I got from my old dear friend Ralph many years ago. I probably, I might experiment with roasting this because I've never eaten them when they're at this stage. And if it's not tasty for humans, I'm sure the chickens will eat it. But we're getting a reasonable... So we'll do half at a time. So it doesn't have heaps of seeds, but the important thing is that this is a really unusual variety that I got from an old friend at a community garden years ago. And he'd be, Ralph would be 91 now, and I haven't seen him for many years. And this is something special that he gave me. So I'm gonna add some water to this now. This is more than enough water. This is actually quite easy to extract the seeds from compared to pumpkins, which can stick quite badly. And we can pull this flesh out. The reason you let it sit overnight in the water is just to loosen the flesh off the seeds, really. But these are quite clean. It's quite dry inside. And the seeds are great. They're all really fat, mature. They're looking spectacular. And I was reading in my Seed Savers book just the other day that Curcubita pipo has a small ridge around the edges of the seed. So I would say that positively this is a Curcubita pipo. So that you can just throw out to the chickens. And we're well on our way to saving the seed. Really importantly, as soon as you start drying the seed, if it's on a piece of paper towel, that is, which it normally is, and I'll be getting some, is that it must be labelled straight away. I think all of us who've saved seed over the years have come across seed where you think, oh, I'm sure I knew what that was, but you've really got no idea anymore. Now, here is a seed that hasn't formed properly. Now that's only a tiny one, so you can obviously see that's not that's not good. But um, that flatness or transparency indicates that the seed is not fertile or viable. We don't want to leave them too long in the water because they might start germinating. We don't want that to happen. We just want to loosen the flesh. That's all. So, hmm. smells good. Smells clean. It's uh, a fantastic seed saving. So. Older gardeners and community gardens are great places to get really special seeds when people have saved them for many years. And I've never seen this variety offered anywhere commercially. It's really tasty. And the other thing about it, because it's climbing, is that the gardeners in that community garden I was in used to train it up and over their vegetables in summer to keep their other vegetables cooler and keep some sun off them. So it had a double usage. And it was also, in permaculture terms, stacking. So you're feeding those climbing plants into other areas to um, fit as much in as possible into that vertical space. So it's a really useful plant. And we're gonna be able to um, share it with people soon. So I thought it could be really useful to highlight some of the things we're looking for and the seeds we want to save. So this is a really weird abnormality. I've never seen a seed do that, but then I haven't harvested heaps and heaps of pumpkin or zucchini seed. So we put that one aside. We don't want that. This is a nice plump seed and you can see that it's rounded from each side. This one, you can just see a little concave in its surface and the other side's rounded out, but this side's rounded in. And that is a sign of a seed that has not developed properly. And hopefully you can see the difference between the two seeds. So this one gets rejected. That's not fertile. And this one is viable. So picking through the seeds, there's one other little funny abnormal one. So we turf that out as well. And that little one's no good either. We don't want those. And I just wanted to show you that there's minor colour variations. There's another seed that hasn't formed properly. So we take that out. But there will be always minor colour variations. Oh, that's a weird shape too. Let me get rid of that. So there's some that are a little bit more yellow. Now, it could be that when they had a little bit of a soak in water for an hour or two or overnight, that that disappears and they're all the same colour. 
but you will get minor variations in seed colour. And that doesn't mean to say that it's not the right variety. It's just that slight irregularity, which is part of biodiversity and heirloom seeds. So now we get to the final part, collecting our seed and most importantly, labelling. So I've got some paper towel here, about four sheets thick. Ralph's climbing zucchini. And really importantly, I'm going to put the date that it was collected. One. And the use by date, which I just happened to know because I looked it up the other day, is going to be about September 2025, because these will last about four or five years. Now we're going to take some of the seed that's been sitting in this case only in a short while, but some fruits take a lot longer to get the flesh off and we're going to be able to tip those, no not with the fruit on them, and spread them out on the paper towel individually and dry them in a warm dark airy space, not too warm, and then we we don't want any flesh on them because that can cause them to rot. And here we have seed ready to be packaged up and kept for the future and shared. Ready? So if any of the flesh is hard to get off, that's what the sieve's for. You can push it around to rub the flesh off. That's a really good mechanism with any, any seed that has fruit attached to it. And then you're spreading it on paper towel, pre-labeled so you don't forget to do it later. And sitting them on a dinner plate, just a little cheeky plate, is a really good way of managing them so that you're not having the paper towel collapsing at any point. So now we're going to chop the biggest one. And this one's had some cracks, so it'll be very interesting to see whether there's any damage inside. But let's have a go and find out. Oh, wow, the skin's harder. Oh, wow, it's a monster. Okay, this could take some time. Possibly should have got a longer cleaver. That's just what I have. It's soft inside, or softer, so once I can actually get the, thing in, the cleaver in, well, it's interesting where the bands of cracking are, it's really strong there. Wow, so much harder to cut than the other one. Amazingly harder to cut. Crikey. That is one tough squash zucchini thing a monster. <sighs> Not good to put your fingers near. That's a bit better. Hopefully I can crack it open soon. <laughs> Probably chefs out there thinking, why doesn't she use a different knife? But this cleaver doesn't get out much, so I thought it could have a bit of a go in the greenhouse. And perfect. Again, smells clean and beautiful. Just a mild pumpkin-y smell. And all that webbing, it's not mould. That's just the natural webbing of the fruit. It's absolutely perfect. So we'll pull out some of the seeds and they can be mixed quite readily because they're exactly the same variety and they've both been hand pollinated and carefully stewarded afterwards so but open pollinated is a term we usually like with heirloom vegetables but in this case you don't want open pollinated you want hand pollinated so that you know you're getting that exact variety and most of us garden in places where we've got neighbours with zucchinis or other species 
of cucubits or squash. And so it's going to be really, really difficult. I think it's two kilometres distance you're meant to have apart um, unless you're growing them away from insects, pollinating insects. Don't want to waste anything. No seed will be lost. So it's really important to hand pollinate 